Hi, it's Dr. Lori, and I'm back with more Real Bargains. These are the real bargains that people are finding at thrift stores like Goodwill, estate sales, yard sales, all kinds of things that people are buying for our song and reselling for a lot of money, just like you. My first Real Bargain comes from a video call. Everybody's giving me permission to retell their stories, and my first one comes from a video call. So, video caller calls me, says, Dr. Lori, I want to tell you about this object. I need to get it appraised. She says, I got this from a, a estate sale, and the estate sale had Ziploc bags of jewelry. So I bought some. I figured, well, you know, I don't know what's in it, but I'll buy some bags of jewelry from the estate sale. It's always a good idea when you see these. These are usually very good. Estate sale bags, jewelry jars, the jewelry boxes, the blue boxes from Goodwill. Usually you're going to find something valuable for the small amount that you're going to pay. So this one was a great find. So she's got, she buys this Ziploc bag at the estate sale. She goes home, she goes through it, and she finds this, this bracelet, a gold bracelet. She finds that it's marked. It has a couple of marks. You can see the marks here. She, it has the Zippo mark, which is basically the mark of the Greek designer manufacturer. That mark is a Greek bracelet. This Greek bracelet is really beautiful. You can see it's in the style that we typically see with the two balls on the end. It's an open bag. Angle. You know, they're made famous, of course, dating back to the ancient world, bracelets made like this one. This one's from the Greek designer, and it was marked 585. Now, 585 is the mark for 14 karat gold. The piece is solid gold. Beautiful piece. She spent $5 for the jewelry bag, and this bracelet alone that came out of that bag is worth 1200 bucks. Marked, obvious, gold, beautiful, real bargain. My next real bargain comes from the world of art. I've told you for a long time that art, jewelry, are very, very good things to pick up if you're gonna be a reseller, if you wanna get great collectibles for your own home. So this is a painting, a really nice painting. It's oil on canvas, it's beautiful. So here's the story. Client calls me on a video call and says, well, Dr. Lori, my husband and I were in a thrift store. This was purchased at Goodwill. We're in the thrift store and I was looking at glass, the wife tells me. I was looking at glass, I was in one aisle, my husband was over looking at paintings. So he comes over to me with this painting and he says, I kind of like this, do you like it? So, you know, I'm looking at the glass and I'm thinking, well, yeah, I like it. And he says, I'm not really sure. So he's kind of, the husband's kind of hemming and hawing. He's not really sure if he wants it. He does not really sure if he wants to buy it. It's marked $4.99. So she says, well, well, why do you like it? He says, well, I kind of like the snow scene and I like the composition. And it's marked on the back. It's signed on the back, but it's not that old. If you see it's signed on the back, it says 1992. It's a Yuri Kornikovov painting. It's an oil on canvas. And when they showed it to me, I said, it's beautiful. So the husband says to me on the video call, well, I like the composition, Dr. Lori, because you taught me about the composition. Yeah, those nice vertical framers and the way in which the landscape comes right through the middle, all the different color tones, nice and pastel -y. On the back, it's signed. It's also dated and it's titled, Spring is Here Again. You can see this title as well. It's a nice piece, again, from the early part of the 1990s. So for $4.99, his wife said, why don't you get it? You like it. It's only $5. Get it. They pay $4.99 at Goodwill and I appraise it for them. It's worth $3,000. That's a real bargain too. Beautiful landscape, wonderful brushwork from a Russian artist working in the time period just after, of course, the fall of the Berlin Wall. This next real bargain comes from a thrift store too. And the video caller who talked to me about it said, well, Dr. Lori, I want you to do this on real bargains, but I don't want the store to find out. <laughs> she didn't want the Goodwill store that she frequents to find out that she got this cameo brooch for 99 cents. So she pays 99 cents for this piece. We're talking on a video call and she's there with her mom. And she says, I love to collect jewelry. I knew that this was something special when I saw it. If you feel like it's something special, you know, go with your gut because oftentimes it will be something special. So you wanna do that. Check out the videos, make sure you know what to look for. And then when you think it's a good thing, go with your gut. The other thing about this piece, the video caller was telling me, in addition to the fact that she didn't want the Goodwill store to know that she found this great piece, 
She said, I liked it and I liked that it was a red coral cameo. Red coral cameos are known to a place called Sardinia, which is west of Rome, of course, an island that's an Italian island west of, of course, the peninsula shoreline where Rome is. So if you go to Rome and you're on, of course, and you're in Italy and you just go west into the sea, you're going to actually hit Sardinia. So Sardinia is a beautiful island, and these red coral cameos are very, very well known and oftentimes from there. This one is a Sardinian red coral cameo. Pretty rare and pretty old. It's set in a setting of rose gold. Of course, rose gold has more copper content than yellow gold or white gold. And the rose gold setting also is enhanced with seed pearls. You can see the seed pearls in this cameo, too. Um, it dates to about the late 1800s, or about 1890 to about 1900. So it's a pretty old cameo. It's in beautiful condition. And she finds it again in this Goodwill. She buy, pays 99 cents for it. And she said, I couldn't get out of that Goodwill fast enough. What's it worth? I appraised it during the video call at $300. It was a real bargain, too. I really liked the profile image of the cameo. I liked the seed pearl enhancement. And I liked the way the red coral and the rose gold, all those sort of tones of red, were put together. It's a beautiful real bargain 19th century cameo. This next real bargain also comes from um, one of my clients. But this client sent me a photo. She wanted an online appraisal for dishes. So a lot of you, of course, collect china. A lot of you know the name, of course, Limoges. These are porcelain dishes Limoges. They're about six inches in diameter, so somewhat small. When you see china that's six inches in diameter, five inches in diameter, you're usually dealing with bread plates or dessert plates. Now, bread plates and dessert plates are usually part of a larger service for eight or 12. So typically, if you have platters, like large dinner plates or platters, Entree plates or dinner plates are going to be a little bit more valuable than these smaller plates. The thing that's cool about the smaller plates is typically you will see a lot of them and you'll see decorations on them. Oftentimes they are hand decorated, just like this one. But the marks are going to teach you a lot about this set. First of all, she's in, of course, a thrift store. She, she sends this piece in to me. I look at it. She bought it at the Goodwill and she said there were 10 of them. So when I saw that there were 10, I bought them all. I was like, okay, she said, I paid 89 cents each, or just about $9, for 10 of these plates. They're white porcelain. You'll notice there's gilding, 22 karat gold banding around it. There's also hand painting. But the mark is really where the money is. It says T and V. It says France. And what that means, that green mark means that it's Tresselman and Voigt, the manufacturers, from France. And where are they located? Limoges. If you got a chance to get some Limoges, Limoges, of course, is where the great pottery center, where a lot of great porcelain is produced. So having said that, it also is further marked. What does that mean? They're signed on the back. They say M.E. Cheshire on the back. And she said that all of these plates had that same M.E. Cheshire name on them, like a signature on the back. In the early 20th century, when these plates were made, about 1920s to the 1930s, people would actually get these plates from Limoges, France. They'd come into the United States. They would be completely blank, and they would decorate them based on a pattern. So M.E. Cheshire is actually the person who painted onto these plates, all 10 of them. You might have some of these plates in your family history with names of family members. So look at these plates if you have decorated or hand-painted Limoges plates hanging around, or if you see them in a thrift store, yard sale, estate sale, and make sure that you take a look and see whether or not someone in your family might have done the painting on them. So M.E. M. E. Cheshire is the person who painted these and decorated them, did a beautiful job only around the rim, which was characteristic of bread plates or dessert plates. Why? You want the center to be left open so you can put food in the center. When they're decorated the whole way, all the way through the middle, then those are usually cabinet plates just for decoration. So she gets these plates, 89 cents each, right? What are they worth? I gave her a written appraisal report indicating what they were, and the whole group of them worth $200 for the group of 10 plates. That's a real bargain, too, and beautifully hand-painted. People like hand-painted pieces. People like pieces that relate, of course, to someone who's painting these themselves and working on them themselves. So it's a nice piece. Again, dates from about the 1920s to the 1930s. Are there 
earlier ones? Yeah, there are earlier ones of these too that you'll see in the early 1900s, 1900, 1910 and such. But the 1920s, 30s ones are really pretty popular and these are very nicely decorated as well. This next real bargain comes from a video call. And if you want to do a video call, you can do a video call too. You'll be talking right with me. Just go to my website, drlaurieV.com, and you can choose the date that you want in my appointment calendar. This was purchased at a thrift store. So you can see it. It's a base of a lamp. It's a floor table lamp. So the lamp sits on the floor. It's got a table which is made of blue glass. You've seen the glass for the tables. Usually it's a green color. Well, the blue glass is very popular in the mid-century modern era, which is exactly when this California lamp was made. The base is a ceramic pot, and then they have, of course, the pole, which supports the socket, the shade, and the lamp at the top. And then, of course, you've got this blue glass table that you can actually have the lamp work. So it kind of utilizes two functions, you know. It's a table as well as a lamp. It's pretty popular in the mid-century modern era into about the mid-1970s is when you usually see these kinds of things. So she buys this piece. She buys it at the Habitat for Humanity thrift store. And she says to me, my video caller says to me, I never spend more than $2 on anything at the thrift store. If it's more than $2, I leave it there. So this was a big deal that I paid 10 bucks for this lamp. I said, what made you buy it for 10 bucks? She said, well, it has the Nardini Studio label on it from Los Angeles. And I knew that Nardini Studios were popular. I'm from California, but I knew that this was going to be worth more than the $10 that I had to invest. Granted, I didn't like spending more than two bucks, she said, but she spent $10 because she saw the label. I always tell you, protect the label. The labels are going to be important if you're going to resell them. And even if you keep them in your own house, it's a good idea to try to protect the label. So the label is underneath the bottom of the actual piece. The piece is ceramic, and it looks like an early form, like a pre-Columbian form, right? Um, those that relate to Spanish colonial time period. It's got sort of these handles. It's, it looks like it's hand-built. It's bulbous in the body. It tapers to the bottom. It's a beautiful piece. And I like the blue glass table. I like that rim of blue glass. That's always pretty. So that's what she got for $10. So she gets it home and she says, you know, I didn't like the shade, so I tossed it. Oh, I heard that. I went, you didn't like the shade, so you tossed it. Even if you don't like the shade, don't toss it. Keep the original pieces. You want to change out the shade on a lamp? Fine, change out the shade. But keep the original shade somewhere because if you do decide to resell it, you may want to resell it with the original shade. There's a reason why the designer chose that shade. So try to keep it. Even if it's not in good shape, keep the shade. So that was a big mistake. And I'm going to tell you how big in a minute. She paid $10. Without the shade, her lamp is worth $350. If she had kept the real shade, now granted, $350 for $10 is a real bargain. That's great. But if she had kept the original shade, that lamp would have been worth $600. Bucks. So remember, when you see these pieces and you have all the original pieces, don't toss something just because it's not your taste. But this is a real bargain too. Bought it for $10. Nardini mid-century modern lamp resold and worth $350. That's a real bargain too. This next real bargain made me laugh. It was from a video call and the callers were so fun. Two sisters who go thrifting. They got this at the Goodwill and they said, well, Dr. Lori, we saw this and we bought it because it was in a plastic container. You know the containers that you're going to put your leftovers in for the refrigerator? Well, this, these pieces were in a plastic container and on the plastic container it said $5.95. So obviously when they were sorting through at the Goodwill, they basically just put all of these spoons together in this plastic container and then they just put the price on the plastic container. She said, I saw $5.95 and I thought to myself, I'm going to... I'm going to buy whatever is inside of this plastic container. So she opens up the plastic container and she finds 20 sterling silver clearly marked spoons. Small spoons for salt, so very tiny spoons, and they are of course marked sterling silver. If you look at the design on them, they're early 20th century. They date to the early 1900s and they have a clear maker's mark and clearly they're marked sterling. 
This is what I mean about Marx. It makes it so easy. It's sterling silver. I never advocate that you melt sterling silver down, but if you do melt it down, you can at least get the money out of the smelt weight, the meltdown weight or the smelt weight um, in sterling silver. I like you to keep it the way it's intended in its original form, because if you do melt it down, you lose the design value and you also lose, of course, the antique value. These pieces date back about 100, 120 years, so you want to keep them in that manner. What are they worth? Well, she paid, as I said, $5.95 for the container as well as all the 20 spoons in the container. She loved that they were sterling silver and she wanted me to tell her more about them. I explained to her that they were used for salt or as with solvers or salts, right? And everybody would have their own little salt pillar and then everybody would have their own little salt spoon and that's what these are. Some of them are a little bit bigger and could be used as teaspoons. Value on the whole set, $300 for all of them. Sterling silver in that condition maintaining their original design value and of course their antique value. That was a real bargain too. This next real bargain comes from a video call and this one was also purchased at a thrift store. This is a great piece and one that's quintessentially indicative of the Art Nouveau art movement. Art Nouveau is the art movement that highlights floral designs and organic forms and lovely women and it oftentimes has its derivation or its origins in French culture. You'll see of course Art Nouveau in all different parts of Europe and America and of course other parts of the world but Art Nouveau here is a really typical sculpture. From an artist who is very well known, his name is Henri Godet and Henri Godet sculpts pieces like this in bronze with enamel work and it's a woman as a flower. It's basically the head of a woman coming out of this floral form. Very typical of um, the artists of the Art Nouveau like Louis Comfort Tiffany or of course Munca and others. Beautiful piece. This one is all decorated with of course the beautiful colorful enamel on bronze and it's a cast sculpture. The piece is also marked. The artist's name is clearly marked on the, uh, on the back. I want you to look all over sculptures when you are looking at them to find the artist's name. There might be an artist's name. There might be a little medallion that is a foundry mark. There might be a date. All different kinds of information. So look around. Don't just say, oh, it's not signed. I can't see it on the base or something. Look around. Look at all areas of it. This one is beautiful. It's in gorgeous condition. So my video caller paid $8 for it. And this piece is worth, ready, 1500 bucks. A beautiful real bargain, a wonderful Art Nouveau sculpture that dates to about 1911. And it's a piece that others have sold recently on the market at 1500 bucks. It was a beautiful real bargain too. I'm Dr. Lori, those are real bargains. You can find them too. Stay right here, learn more about how you can find your real bargain real soon.